Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. Right now, we'll be going over my review for The Bad Guys. Uh, first and foremost, I want to just get this out of the way. Uh, I was briefly looking up, like, apparently this was a book inspired by a book series, but that is a very loose term. Essentially, it kind of, uh, the best example I have uh, as my surf, so, source reference, let's go with that, uh, for my own experience, is kind of like the Teen Titans uh, animated series back in the mid-2000s. Well, basically, you're taking uh, source material, keeping the most core aspects of it, you know, basic aspects of it, and then fleshing it out with your own creative drive and uh, references to references to what's it, and also stylings of like the inspiration for said creative drive. In this case, uh, what's it anim anime for the. Uh, Teen Titan series, that, you know, you do say, um, make something that is still connected to the original source material, but has also undoubtedly become its own thing, what, again, while still remaining connected. And it's a very much the case for the film. So, that is a bit of a help, you know? You don't have to worry too much about, like, do, will you know what has been cut out from the book or whatnot, or how closely it follows, you know. It very much is just taking base premises for the characters and then spinning them out into their own thing uh, for the medium they are in and the inspirations of the creatives behind the project. And I'm just going to... Maybe maybe it's just me having a, a fondness for this particular franchise and seeing it wherever I go... But I'm getting the strong sense that this uh, was inspired, in, at least in part, you know, by the people who made the film and adapted in the way they did, uh, by Lupin the Third. There's just a lot of things. The way they kind of run, the catch up with vehicles at times when they're briefly outside of them. Uh, the way the um, muscle car that Mr. Wolf drives throughout this kind of moves is very reminiscent of the over-the-top exaggerated driving from that uh, series. And not to go into spoilers of this, because I want to leave a few things vague. Uh, there's a moment where, you know, uh, Mr. Wolf is just trying to swim through the air. And I swear I've seen that in that franchise, if not in, in a few... No, I can't even think of, like, anywhere else in a anime I've seen that. It's just, like, so primarily from Lupin the Third. It would not surprise me at all if there is, like, a, um interview somewhere with, like, what's it, uh, a lead on the project describing it, Lupin the Third's influence that I just haven't found because I didn't look for that before this, but... I really, really feel like it's played a part in this, but who knows? I may just be a Lupin fanatic, seeing it whatever I go. Anywho, back into the premise of this film. Uh, we follow a gang of criminals uh, called the Bad Guys that consist of Mr. Shark, the leader and face of the group, and, you know, still very capable, capable on their own, right? Like, we... Again, he is very much like the, uh, I want to say, again, like Lupin type, very charming, very charismatic, and uh, very skilled as well, even if they do have, like, specialists they do rely upon. They still have a, divi a diverse array of skills themselves, saying array again. I hope, I'm gonna drop a little bit of lore here. I literally just recorded my review for the Sea Devils before this. I hated talking about that, and I, I am loving talking about this film. Like, just thinking back to it. I literally just watched it today, and I I loved it so much. Uh, spoilers. Anywho, we also have uh, Mr. Snake, what's it? Um, a bit more of a grouchy type who specializes in stealth and sa uh, safe cracking. Um... What's it, um, 
Mr. Strancher, who is a hacker who commits the cardinal sin of acting as if you can just type really fast to hack, as opposed to just having to uh, script very complex lines of codes well beforehand to try and, like, just countermand, uh, well, here's me sounding all smart, or failing to attempt to. Oh, God, I'm not even bothered correcting myself. To act as a virus, like, you cannot just, like, clickety-clickety-clack like media wants you to present. Like, you, you cannot type unless you are superhumanly fast. You like Barry Allen, the Flash fast, to match up with the speed a computer goes for processing all this information on lines of codes. You need to have this what's it all prepared beforehand. But anywho, uh, note there, changed from a guy to a girl, which, yeah, I, given I like the character, uh, I was there for it. So, alright. Uh, then we have Shark, who is given this skill of a uh, master of disguise for some reason. I, I don't know why, but then again, I uh, based on my gr uh, brief Googling, it's very late, can't you tell? I also didn't get a lot of sleep. Anywho, brief Googling uh, just was there in the books. So, okay, but still had a good time with this. Delightful, delightful bit with um, his second sky. So that's a thing, though. By the very nature of the way the plot progresses, at a certain point, the disguise gimmick becomes entirely unnecessary. I think outside of one that establishes it at the very beginning with them having a bank robbery, the beginning of this film, I will say, is superb. I, I don't want to go over it point by point because it's just amazing and emphasizes like this kind of like vintage crime uh, not even just crime just this vintage style this entire film has you know with like the music and the banter and it's like mm, like the I will also say the chemistry between all the voice actors pretty dang good I w did not think there was like a bad uh, Bad voice in the lot, you know? Not someone phoning it in or not really interacting with the character as well. I think it they all did a tremendous job. Now, where was I? Yes, the final character, Piranha. Uh, what's a kind of a loose cannon and uh, maniac. Also, kind of coded as Hispanic and it's like, okay, that's a trend. Yeah, it's like... I do tend to love these characters, but I can't, I can't uh, deny. It's like, why is it always two Hispanics are the wildly passionate maniacs, you know? Why? That's not exactly great. They also have this thing uh, from the books and now into the films about flatulence, where in the books apparently it was just a problem uh, Mr. Planner had, whereas in the films it's like, okay, this happens whenever I'm nervous. And it's like, if this is going to be such a core, integral part to his character, why is he not a skunk? Why is he not Mr. Skunk as opposed to Mr. Piranha? I get, I, I get like a skunk may not be a, like an apex predator, but like they kind of go for this um, metaphor for, you know, what's it, discrimination and systemic and ingrained racism and bigotry. I'm pretty sure... You could get away with saying, yeah, skunks are uh, shunned by society as well. In probably different, but still equally hurtful ways compared to, like, the predators. So, you know, that that was something you could have done. That would have been so much better. And there's also some redundancies. What's it? Especially with just the characterization of uh, Mr. Prada, where it's like, for, like, all his, uh, what's it, prose, uh, Mr. Wolf's prose, he is an impulsive guy as well, so it's like, okay, you have the impulsive leader, who still makes a good plan, knows how to handle the team, and stays on top of stuff, but is still impulsive, and then you have, you know, a hothead, uh, maniac as well, it's like, again, redundant. 
not to say it was a bad job by um oh god, I can't remember. Kevin Smith, I believe. No, no, not Kevin Smith. I I'm pretty sure it's not Kevin Smith. But why was I thinking of Kevin Smith? I think... Oh, I think because there, there was an ad for that uh, Super Pets film. Oh, well. Oh, willity, willity, will. Anyhow. Just not the biggest fan of him, but it's not any of the actors' the actors' fault there. Anyhow. In opening scene, we do get established to them as being renowned, incredibly successful, what's it, um, Genesis, uh, Band of Thieves, being able to see everything from priceless art to, you know, just bank robberies, but they are kind of getting a elegant, cocky, and all-round sloppy, as is pointed out by the new governor, Diane Foxington, and who does make a call out later that they're going to make it personal after they make it personal and go after like this Good Samaritan the Year award that she will be giving out. What's it? And like literally says it to his face in the skies. I, I do wonder. Because like, not spoilers or anything, but like it does become apparent later on when it's revealed. And I wonder, was she actually genuinely fooled by the skies? If so, then, like, I would love that, actually, you know? That would be rather nice and also, again, uh, be very good for their skills. Now, where was I? Where was I? Hmm. Oh, yes. Anywho, they set out to steal the Good Samaritan Award. They do the best. They, again, way too impulsive on this and are barely getting through through it by the skin of their teeth. But they just manage, manage to get everything. But, uh, Genesis Claw, where was I? Yes, Mr. Wolf actually did a good deed at some point uh, throughout the heist, you know, and was rather pleased with himself. And then there's the speech for the recipient of the Good Ward, uh, Good Samaritan Award, and that kind of resonates with him. And much when he saved that person from falling, an old lady he was going to otherwise rob, uh, his tail starts wagging again, and that kind of gives the gang away. And it looks like they, the goose might finally be cooked. But Wolf is ever the charmer. And manages to convince the Good Samaritan to, you know, who is presented as uh, egotistical, you know, in that uh, narcissistic way, whereas, you know, they're trying to appear, appear as, you know, good as possible, you know. Uh, and just, in general, has a big ego that is easy to stroke. But, uh, yeah, it tries to appeal to them to, like, hey, you have done so much good, convinced so many people to do better, but we were never really given a chance because of us just being predators. You give us a shot at redemption here. And, you know, he is eventually able to warm his way. My nose is itchy for some reason. I Great that it's happening in the episode. I can't really edit. Oh, well. Anywho. Convinces the uh, governor and the uh, professor to uh, sign off on that. And eventually, wacky hijinks ensues, lot of good laughs are had, and so on and so forth. Uh, things go on until we get to the party where they do intend to actually steal what's it, their Good Samaritan Ward again. But, 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 a uh, musical number breaks out. Uh, I, I I love musical numbers, but there was actually still a few kids, a few kids in, in with me, in this uh, viewing I had, and they started getting a little bit rowdy, and I don't think they were like, young enough to justify that, they weren't like five or six year olds, I think they were like ten or eleven, you know, 
point where you like know better in the cinema to like make a lot of noise because like other people are there with you wanting to listen. Oh well. Yeah, musical number they use to get the code. Well, they get the code before that. Uh, this is a randomly generated number. It's not important. They're going to steal the thing. They've done all the trap work and set up. But wouldn't you know, musical number inspires a little bit of change within Wolf as well as like an interaction with um, uh, Diane Foxington. Like, I ship them so much. So, so much. It is wonderful. They have an amazing dance scene together. And it is amazing. And the whole that whole scene I just absolutely loved as well. This film is so so well animated. Like again, like not just like pretty to look at and good motion, but to describe something as animated, regardless of whether or not it's like 2D drawing, CGI, live action, it's just so bombastic and fluid. I love it. And it has such a heightened sense of reality, which I've described with, like, again, certain things like trying to swim through the air a little bit uh, to reach something. That's not how that would actually work in real life, but it's like, that's the world we're playing in here. Sure, 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 sure. And it's just so, so delightful. Anyhow, change of heart, what's it, doesn't go through with stealing the Samaritan, but there's... I've been this thing hinted at uh, throughout the course of the film, very subtly, then a little bit more explicitly, and then it's like overhead, uh, this meteorite goes missing. And everyone uh, instinctively assumes it was the bad guys, despite the fact they didn't really do anything. But they were a little bit too, too cocky again, you know? Because they literally had programmed in uh suckers yeah you know, just a, a little gif like a 2d spike gif of wolf saying suckers to the party as they were make supposedly making the getaway at this point in time but um yeah yeah that really really came back to bite them because immediately they're arrested and sent off to prison now, I'm going to get a little bit more vague right about now, because I don't know if they intended for this to be red herring, or for you to kind of be able to see this coming yourselves. But I kind of expected it to go a certain different way, based on some interactions with the characters. And I... Because I, I didn't mention them earlier. Oh yeah, there was a... A whole heist, what's it, uh, to try and free some guinea pigs as well. That, uh, yeah, well, it's a, a very funny scene. Scene. It kind of happens. It's relatively integral to the plot, though, so you can't just cut it. But yeah, that does happen. Leads to an interaction between uh, Diane Foxington and Mr. Wolf. Anyway, back to where I was. Just forgot to mention that and wanted to cover it. Yeah, from this point on... It is turned out they have been betrayed by someone in a position of authority over them in this whole circumstance. And it has gone rather swimmingly, and they are sent off to jail, and there's a, a huge spat between Wolf and Snake, and it kind of fractures the friend group for a bit. But, because of uh, Mr. Wolf's earnest deeds, they are broken out by a criminal that they have been building up throughout the film, called The Crimson Paw. How this comes about, I won't exactly spoil for you, but never, nevertheless, they are an ally uh, for the rest of the film. Now, where was I? And they do break him out with the intent to uh, stop the person that did betray them, because that meteorite, very dangerous, you know, can control things, and it's bound to cause a lot of problems. But the the rest of the group isn't really having it, unfortunately. The trust is kind of infractured, and they kind of need to figure their things out. You know, they go their own separate ways. But, uh, yeah. 
Anywho, uh, I'm thinking ahead now of how much I do want to go into. Um, Wolf is rather directed. He really does feel bad about like the faction his friend groups, despite still committing himself to like doing the right thing. Like again, the uh, betrayer does mock him for like how easy it was to play, but the fact that he could be swayed by this as opposed to just being completely numb to it does imply, yeah, there was a potential and good for him all along. He committed towards it. He didn't want to steal. He like sacrificed the loot, you know, because it was the right thing to do that they have all previously stolen. And like once free. He is, like, earnestly committing to trying to save the day. Like, and the betrayer is, like, uh, weaponizing, like... Uh, God, I, I don't know if they intended this or not, but, like, they do bring up evolution at one point, and it's like, okay, this is anthropomorphic characters and the predators. It could just be very innocent, or it could... He could be very dog whistly in this moment. You know? They could be very dog whistly. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. Anywho, that aside, does weaponize, like, you know, uh, the perceived futility of trying to rehabilitate known offenders. Uh,. For their benefit, but clearly through the actions that uh, Wolf has taken, it disproves that thoroughly. Now, where else was I? A delightful little scene with uh, the Crimson Paw and Mr. Wolf in the hidey hole, the little bat cave, if you will. Uh, just going over all the gadgets they have, and it was a delightful scene. There's some actiony stuff then as we. Uh, get into them trying to steal. They get trapped for a bit, but wouldn't you know, the rest of the crew, except for Snake, comes back. Turns out Snake betrayed a wolf, unfortunately. Hey, ah, oh, dang it. Curse you. Of all the time. Oh, yeah, well. Uh, apparently, Snake betrayed them. Anywho, the rest of the crew comes in. Uh, Piranha farts. The guard that's slowly uh, dropping them into a knife, a uh, rotating knife pit. Uh, unconscious. I swear, there's only like a handful, not even a handful, like three or four jokes that are like, okay, this is like for very young kids that could have easily been cut and really boosted, <laughs> like the film. Well, not really, but like. I don't know, it's just like, none of them are as bad as like the trailer I saw for the Super Pets one, where it's like the dog just peeing and we just have to accept this and haha, it's funny because dog pee. Like none of them are that bad, but at the same time, there's just some, re a few, a few really juvenile ones that the film could have been better without, you know? I don't think they needed them there at all. It really is uh, trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator there, but oh well. Anyhow, they break out and uh, start trying to foil the betrayer's master plan of stealing all the money that was raised. Because, oh, I forgot to mention, it was a charity ball they were at that led to the whole music number and trying to steal the uh, Samaritan Award. Yeah, trying to steal, like, a billion dollars, which they helped raise as well, inadvertently, so... Yeah. And they get to work setting that, ruining that plan, but... Uh, the meteorite, just it being gone, apparently, from the compound, isn't enough to break the effect they have. Uh, with the device, they are being powered with the uh, meteorite. So... It leads to an exciting chase scene, trying to uh, catch up to all the vans and remotely override them uh, to send them back to the charities after they've been stolen from them. 
And it is such a beautiful, breathtaking scene. Also the prison break one as well. The Crimson Paw. Just a phenomenal fight scene. Truly, truly impressive while managing to have a few funny moments in it as well. I absolutely wholeheartedly love it. Ah, another half hour of you. Delightful. Anyhow, eventually though, despite the best efforts, the betrayer is still after them. And uh, eventually, uh, what's it? Threats and stick. I believe they do go back for him. You know, they have the meat right. They can make a big show of returning it to the police. But they just can't do it without Snake. So they uh, try and go back for him. And uh, the betrayer just throws him out of the, of the helicopter they're chasing around in. And Snake's just barely holding on. Literally by the teeth, because they don't have arms. And Wolf is like, uh, trying to blackmail. Well, not blackmail, but coerce. what's it, um... Where was I? Uh, the betrayer. Into pulling up uh, Snake in the helicopter. Has a little blowtorch thing. Delightful. It's a nice little callback. I won't spoil it to you yet, but... There's so many little things I love in this film. Anywho... His response to that is like, take us up higher and, you know, calls Wolf's bluff and kicks Snake's off. And yeah, Wolf just prioritizes saving Snake over like the meteorite there. Anywho, anywho, where was I? Yeah, and they eventually just drive off like a, bro a broken uh, highway, I want to say, to try and save Snake. They do manage to do it, and it is revealed at uh, uh, some point. I won't go into the exact details, but, um, well, Snake is just as redeemed as the rest of the cast. I'll say that much. But, yeah, and I it does feel a bit anticlimactic, uh, the way I'm describing it, because I do, there are some twists and turns there that I don't want to spoil. It's a lot of fun. I so recommend this film. Uh, what's it? The They do get out. They go to jail, but get out in a year. Because I imagine sopping all this stuff and... Well, the governor being aware of what's happened probably was, as things came to light, able to work a pardon, I imagine, to get them out, uh, get them off only after a year. Unless they just have, like, very loose sentencings for, like, crime, non-violent crime. I mean... You'd hope so, like, we'd hope for that in real life, but, I don't know. Anywho, well, not so loose, but, you know. I don't know, like, I don't think, like, three-strike laws are a good thing, you know? Or, you know, a minimal, recognizable amount of some kind of substance, I couldn't say what, should send you away for 20 years? That seems wildly disproportionate. Anywho. Yeah, and it's all I can say after that point. It's wonderful. The ending is super satisfying. They, oh, um, no, like we do get the sense for like Wolf becoming very earnest about like his redemption, despite not being fully aware of it himself yet. But I don't want to go into specific details because it's very sweet, and I don't want to spoil the first viewing of that. Like again, wholeheartedly. I recommend this film. There's wonderful interactions between all the main characters. The voice acting is pretty dang good. Do love it a great deal. There's a whole vintage style and vibe to this entire production that I'm absolutely in love with. Like, bombastic animation, animation lovely music, and it is just a delight. Also, like... Well, I will say, what's it, um, Diana Fockington is more my type, personally. I am ecstatic to find out just how much the internet loves Mr. Wolf. Uh, treats him like a good old lovable himbo. <laughs> and, because of that, this film will be eternally prevalent within the fairy fandom. So, huzzah. But, yeah, yeah, I really, I, I feel bad, because, like, Based on production, I 
I don't remember seeing a bunch of advertising for it, but ever since I got premium on YouTube, I don't see a ton of ads on that anymore, and that's the main way I did see ads, so... But yeah, right now, from the best of my knowledge, it's grossed, like, uh, nearly 200 million, which is still, like, profitable, compared to what's it, um... Like, 80 million, I believe, budget to make, and then some a minimal amount of marketing. That's still a profit, but, like... Nowhere near as much as this film deserves. It is an absolute delight and deserves as much attention as possible. It should just barely, if you catch this within like a few days of this going up, still be in within your local cinemas. Probably only with just one showing, but I do recommend going and partaking in that. Or if you just want to stay at home, you know, don't want to travel or you're watching this later... Please do either rent or buy the film. I I so desperately, desperately want a sequel to this. Because, what's it? This feels like the origin story based on what the uh, books were about. was like a bunch of ba former bad guys trying to rehabilitate their image and do the right thing. Though their PR is just always in the garbage. They, they never really like super win over the public. But like they keep trying anyhow. And I feel like this is the fair, the origin story to that. So there is a lot of potential for like a sequel, either in a film or an animated series. But whatever it is, I desperately, desperately want it. I so, I so want more interactions between uh, Mr. Wolf and Diane. I, I want it so badly. They play off each other perfectly. It is delightful. And, yeah, I just cannot recommend it enough. Please go watch it any way you can. Now, what else should I say? Hmm. Uh, do 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 Uh, do 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 A brief call to action stuff, and then I'll go over what's it. Um. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll go over some of it, because I do like the way they go, these things. And, you know, we've called action stuff, and then we'll go over the full spoilers. So, bail in time if you want to be completely blind to this. Any anywho, uh, what's it? No, that's not the right one. No, that's the wrong panel altogether, silly me. New PC fund. Uh, yeah, trying to just improve the quality of these, be able to edit things again, improve quality of streams. Huge help to donate there. Also, reason I don't have the normal shades, uh, time to upgrade my prescription. Rather expensive, over 200 euros for just that pair to get done up again. This one's going to cost me a lot, and I have another one I didn't do the last time that needs to get done. So, right now, like, literally any donation is all is a huge help and provides a lot of uh, stability to me. So, again, anything at all, thank you very much. But of course, do not feel obligated. Uh, hit the like, subscribe, check out uh, Sod Pattern Gaming on YouTube, Twitch, and Trovo, where I stream a bunch of days a week, Monday, Thursdays. Uh, no, not Monday. What, why did I say Monday? That was bizarre. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, anywho. A bunch of stuff at the link tree that you can follow, and also join the Reddit and the Discord to be an active part of the community. Now, where was I? Yes, super spo spoilery territory now. Uh, back out if you don't want to hear these specific twists that I've been holding in. Now, turns out the professor was the betrayer, and the way he, like, weaponizes it... Uh, the, um, again, for lack of a better term, the discrimination against it, against the protagonist here, is truly despicable. And, like, he only uh, presents himself as this humanitarian for his own benefit and his own ego. But he is just as bad as, like, not even, he's worse than as we see the, what's it, uh, the bad guys at the very start of this film, let alone as it comes to the end of it. Ironically enough, sp uh, inspired by his um, little course on trying to train them how to be better people. It is rather ironic. 
uh, I should also say, turns out, massive con as well by what's it, the, uh, uh, the professor. Like, you think, um, what's it, uh, Wolf is trying to Clooney, what's it, they literally call it that, uh, do 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 the professor, but, um, oh, he was Clooney right back as well, planting little thoughts in his head to inspire him. To take action on his own accord, as if it was entirely his own idea. Truly diabolical. But yeah. Yeah, I... No other words for it, he is truly diabolical. And also just reprehensible as a being for, you know, recognizing that discrimination. And like, he knows he can get away with it. And it is loathsome. Utterly, utterly loathsome. But yeah, this whole scheme was just to get away with a robbery while setting up the bad guys as patsies for it, so. And uh, Diane Foxington was in fact the Crimson Paw, and I really do like the inter interaction between like um, her and Wolf as this becomes revealed. Like, uh, she's clearly quite skilled, quite capable. And at least in terms of like, as a solo operative, I imagine what's its... Better than Wolf. I'm not sure when it comes to, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat. But at the same time, I don't... I just cannot believe, like, uh... Uh... Diane would be anywhere as good as a face as, you know... Or leader as Wolf. But, like, there's no, like, um... Tension between them. They do work, what's it, um... Incredibly fluidly. Like, uh... Once on the same page there. Working together. Like... Uh, Diane is just so ecstatic to show off her little back cave there and all the gadgets within. They they just pair wonderfully together, despite like uh, their impulsive nature getting into the trap. I just absolutely love it, and in a sequel, I want want to explore the relationship so much more. Like normally, like in, well, not normally, but in some bad cases, when you have the like, this case, um. You have the guy be insecure, or the writers just like massively overhype the woman's capabilities. Uh, to what? Uh, not masculinate, but like definitely overshadow the guy and have to either bruise his ego or he has to like learn to take it in check. But like, no, like he has nothing for respect for Diane for her capabilities, and you know. And her's a person, and that is truly lovely, and while there's confidence in what, like, um, uh, what's it, uh, Diane can do in her skills as, like, one of the best thieves in the world, like, she never feels smug and hangs at Overwolf. Like, that's really what makes me love them so much. They just, like, feel like such a great couple, and I cannot, I really hope uh, if this does become like an episodic uh, film franchise or series, we delve into that relationship. So, that will be everything. Going up 40 minutes. What a ramble. Oh well. Ah, but ba ba remix these in the morning. It's super late for me. Going to bed after this. So, on that note, and me sharing my sl poor sleep schedule with all of you, it is time to say, Doctor. Wiedersehen. Until we meet again. And I forgot to hit this. And before I press the stop button again. Oh, I forgot to take that off. Oh, well. Please, watch this film wherever, however you can find it. That does, does actually support, well, I suppose, this franchise. It's of so many things that get greenlit and thrown on the screens. This should not fail. This should succeed. It should, uh, should uh, soar. Oh, I'm going on. Shh, shh, shh. It is wonderful. It is an absolute delight. I cannot recommend it highly enough. If you can get into heightened sense reality, this film will be perfect for you. Anyhow, bye. And click.